From Microbe TV, this is Beyond the Noise, episode number 60, recorded on March 31st, 2025. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me today is your host, Dr. Paul Offit. Hi, Vincent. This is the video version of Paul's column on Substack called Beyond the Noise, cutting to the chase on important health topics. But Paul, I think when you started this, you had no idea that we would be in this position, did you? No, 60 times. Amazing. Yeah, and, and um, it gets worse. Today we're going to talk about <laughs> Paul's most recent column, and yet it still moves. <laughs> this is all about Galileo, Paul. Why did you get interested in Galileo? Well, I think it's relevant to today. I mean, today we are living in an age where I think science is losing its place as a source of truth. I think people are declaring their own truths. And um, I guess I found some solace in Galileo's story. To so tell us this story of what happened a long time ago, right? <laughs> so um, Galileo, who was a probably the father of um, observational astronomy, um, who was able to define, for example, the rings around Saturn or the phases of Venus, um, he believed in Nicholas Copernicus's notion that the Earth revolved around the sun, that the Earth wasn't the center of the firmament. Now, the, um, the Roman Catholic Church at the time, although it's not really clear from the biblical scripture that it says that the Earth is the center of the firmament, at least interpreted that way. And so they didn't want anyone to stand up uh, supporting Nicholas Copernicus's theory that the Earth revolves around the sun. But Galileo did. And he, he published that actually in, in a second treatise that he wrote that this was true, that the earth revolved around the sun. So he was brought up before a tribunal of the Roman Catholic Church who censured him, put him in chains. And then as he was let out, he looked back and said in Italian, which you're much better at saying than I am, he said, and yet it still moves. Meaning you can put me in chains, you can lock me up, but that doesn't change the fact that the earth revolves around the sun. And that's the way I feel today. I mean, when you watch people, for example, like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. say over and over again that vaccines cause autism. Well, uh, I do believe that autism does come from vaccines. Or that the measles vaccine kills people every year, or that the measles vaccine causes blindness and deafness. There are adverse events from the vaccine. It does cause deaths every year. It causes it causes all the illnesses that measles itself cause encephalitis and blindness, etc. It's just not true. And no matter how many times he says it, or how many sycophants or fringe scientists or congressmen or media people <laughs> he gets to repeat it, it's just not true. So they made Galileo say that the earth was at the center, right? Right. So what would have happened if he didn't say that? Would they have left him in chains in jail or something? Um, don't know. I don't, it's, the, the story is probably apocryphal. It probably yeah. never happened, but it's just, you know, too good to resist. It poor simulve. I love it. It's great. <laughs> so the difference, of course, is that Galileo was telling the truth. This is what the science told him. He had made observations with his telescopes, and he said, this is what I conclude. And RFK Jr. is lying left and right. So, uh, you, you know, your basic idea is correct that, um, you know, the, the science in the end tells us what the truth is, but uh, it's the opposite for Galileo and RFK. So you, you mentioned a, a bunch of things that, that RFK has said. Uh, and also, uh, the, the polio vaccine is the deadliest ever made or has killed more people than it's saved, right? Um, uh, SARS-CoV-2 was ethnically targeted. There's another lie. 1918 pandemic caused by the flu vaccine. I mean, how can you? There was no vaccine, as you have said many times before. I don't, I don't even understand how people can believe him. Because he say it, says it with certainty. He often points to studies that either don't exist or don't actually say what he says they say. And for yeah. the most part, when he's talking in front of the public or he's talking in front of uh, congressmen or their, or their legislative assistants, they don't know enough to correct him. And he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. And I guess that's good enough. It's amazing that he said all these things during his confirmation hearings 
and many people pointed out that they were wrong and yet still confirmed. To this day, this blows me away that a guy who just gives some, as Peter Marx said this week, lies and misinformation. I thought that was perfect because that really crystallizes it. Right. And you have to give Peter Marx credit. I mean, he was sort of given the choice to resign or be fired. So he resigned and he could have done that quietly, but he knew that the reason that he was being asked to step aside was because he wasn't going to go along with RFK yeah. Jr.'s misinformation and disinformation. He wasn't going to go along with trying to shoehorn data into uh, to fit uh, RFK Jr.'s hypothesis that, for example, vaccines cause autism. And he knew David Geyer had been hired as a quote unquote data analyst and that Geyer had published a couple studies trying claiming that this ethylmercury containing preservative in vaccines caused autism. And, and the Institute of Medicine reviewed those studies and said that basically they were uninterpretable because they were so methodologically flawed. But that's his kind of guy. That's RFK Jr.'s guy, David Geyer, because he's willing to shoehorn data to fit a, a fixed immutable belief that RFK Jr. has, which is that vaccines cause autism. And I think uh, uh, Peter Marx was um, really, really upset about what's going on. I'm surprised he was allowed to say those things, right? Like you can imagine he would be censored, but he wrote a letter and it was released. So this is great um, that he's called it misinformation and lies, as you and I have been saying uh, for months here. Good for him. I mean, it's, there's not yeah. it doesn't seem to be a lot of profiles and courage out there right now. No, no. Nobody is, is willing to call anyone out except us looking from the sidelines, <laughs> right? So back to Galileo. Um, you write that scientific truth wins in the end. How long did it take for Galileo to be acknowledged as correct? Well, I think there was a commission that went to look retrospectively at what happened to him um, and, and a pontifical commission that decided that, that he wasn't treated fairly. So that was presented you know, to, to, the, uh, to the powers that be in the Roman Catholic Church who then agreed that he had been treated unfairly. So, and they, the, the New York Times had a headline that, that said something like, <laughs> um, you know, I forget exactly the quote, but it was something like, um, after 350 years, Vatican says Galileo was right, it moves. So hopefully it won't take that long to overturn a lot of the misinformation that's coming uh, right now out of the mouths of people like Robert F. Kennedy Jr., we can only hope. We we can't last for 350 years of this. Well, none of them, none of us, them will be alive anyway. But <laughs> I, I I personally worry for future generations who are going to inherit all this infectious disease nonsense, which they shouldn't, right? It's going to take a long time to reassemble this. I feel like we have been invaded by a foreign country, and that foreign country's job, first job, is to completely dissemble the public health system in right. this country. So in a in a few weeks, I give a, my virology course uh, on HIV AIDS, and I always put statistics up. And this year, I'm going to say these numbers are going to go way up next year in the U.S. I'm quite sure in the rest of the world um, because of them cutting funds for for prevention. Right. You you look at the measles outbreak now, and they they say that there are roughly about 400 plus cases. That's way low. I mean, you have people in the Mennonite community that are told specifically that when they get measles, don't go to a doctor. When they say they're, say, 400 cases, they mean confirmed cases. I mean, mm -hmm. they mean confirmed by PCR, confirmed by serology, which means that the person has to agree to have that testing done. Mm -hmm. there, there are people inside the administration right now who are saying it's probably closer to at least 2,000 cases and probably 3,000 cases. And if you look at the doubling time that's going on right now, that, it, that we very well may have another child who dies in this country country within the next few weeks, the virus has now entered Lancaster County, where there's another Amish and Mennonite community with that is highly under vaccinated. So I think we're just seeing the beginning of this in many ways. And, you know, this is a virus that usually hangs in there till at least uh, mid spring. So we're, we're dealing with at least this until mid May. So another month and a half of this. Of course, Paul, when it, it does subside because of the seasonal issue, then RFK Jr. will claim that it's because of his interventions, right? right. Because of the vitamin A. Right. Yeah, we're going to have to wait another year uh, to prove him wrong. By the way, I always wanted to ask you, and I never remember, uh, the original, the virus that's been circulating in Texas, do we know its origin? Was it imported, as many are in the, into the U.S.? 
I'm not sure. The, the first time the Texas Health Department knew that there was a problem was when there were two children admitted with severe pneumonia to a Lubbock house hospital. That's the first time they knew it. So when you see children admitted, you already know you're looking at the tip of the iceberg because only yeah. about one in five children are admitted to the hospital. So it likely happened well before that. They think probably before Thanksgiving it started. So th they're not sure. Yeah. And all the other outbreaks that we're seeing throughout the U.S., we don't know the origin of them. Some of them might have come from Texas, right? Right. Although it's, it's sort of another irony of the current administration. I mean, when we eliminated measles from this country in 2000, uh, that meant that, that it really wasn't transmitted from one American person to another American person. Um, but the virus comes into this country every year because international yeah. travel is common. There's probably 150,000 people who die of measles every year in the world. So there's millions of cases. And um, and now by cutting funding from to Gavi, you know, the Global Alliance Vaccine Initiative, that means even less immunization in yeah. the developing world, which means even more people who likely will be coming into this country with measles. We are about to become measles land. Measles, polio, who knows what else. Right. So uh, back to the, the Galileo, uh, I thought it was interesting. The Roman Inquisition, its job was to make sure that Catholic Church beliefs were propagated, right? And this was one they didn't like. But what's driving RFK's telling lies? is We've talked about this before. Is it really about profit and can make making people suffer be worth making money? I think he believes what he's saying. I think, as he says in his book, uh, The Real Anthony Fauci, that he doesn't believe in the germ theory. He believes in the so-called miasma theory, which is to say that there are environmental poisons, environmental toxins that cause problems. And to him, the modern day miasmas, the modern day poisons are things like electromagnetic radiation, uh, pesticides, artificial flavorings, and vaccines. I think he sees vaccines as a modern day miasma. And he will, he believes, I think, that, that if he's going to do his job to save America's children, he has to do everything he can to decrease the use of vaccines, decrease availability, decrease affordability, and make people scareder and scareder of vaccines. I think he thinks he's doing a service. As he said, he has said publicly that when he sees a parent holding a child, say, on a biking path or hiking path, he goes up to that parent and he says, don't vaccinate that child and believes he has saved this child. I see somebody on a hiking trail with a carrying a little baby and I say, I'm better not get him vaccinated. And he heard that from me. If he hears it from 10 other people, maybe he won't do it. You know, maybe he, maybe he will save that child. I think what makes him so frightening is he believes this. I don't think he's paid to say it. I think he really believes it. Well, in time, and maybe it will take a year or so, There'll be so much infectious disease in the U.S. People are going to be fed up. And I hope uh, he's gone. I hope you're right. I mean, it's always it's the most vulnerable among us who suffer our ignorance. And in this case, it'll be our children. Yeah. So it's interesting. In Galileo's time, religion superseded science. Today, politics supersedes science. Which I guess is its own kind of religion. But yeah. Yeah, it is. We'll put a link to this column in the show notes. It's Beyond the Noise with Dr. Paul Offit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Vincent.